The attention to detail in iOS 17 has made it one of the best and most useful iOS updates in a while. And no, it's not a major overhaul, but it does take some of the best iOS 16 features and really expands on them on this update. After using the beta for a few months, there are a ton of new features that you can try, but there are seven in particular that I believe that you could be using on a day-to-day -day that will improve your life. So let's talk tech. I'm Agent with Ardently Tech, and the first thing you gotta try is the new active widgets. Sure, we've had widgets since iOS 15, but the weird thing is you weren't able to interact with your widgets without having to open the app. They acted kind of basically as bulky shortcuts to those apps. Sure, they provided good information and, and a nice, easy to view little icon, but you would have to always open the app at the end of the day. Now, if you have a reminders widget, you can just check off things right from the widget without having to open the app, which should have been the case a while ago. Though it took a while, I'm glad it's here. I've been using it primarily with the reminders checklist because I use the reminders as my checklist a lot, but I'm excited to see what other apps are gonna be able to do with that. The next one is actually Spotlight Search, which is really good. Yeah, it has its very similar capabilities of before, but the cool new things is that you can like turn on certain setting modes basically anything in the settings that you are able to toggle on or off or mess with you're able to do it on the spotlight search which is really handy they previously added the search functionality in the settings app but now you can just search from your spotlight from your home screen without having to go into the settings app and just go straight directly from there and the best thing is if you are looking for a text message or a photo or with that a certain word obviously you're able to do that in spotlight search and show those photos that have a certain word that you're looking for or even in your messages again not something super new but it's just a lot better now and speaking of messages that's actually number three on my list the new voice message features in messages app is really clutch arnell and i often communicate with audio voice messages and they can get sometimes pretty lengthy and sometimes i'm in the office and i can't read them now if the person who's sending you a voice message is on ios 16 you won't get a dictated message from them but whenever i send a voice message out with ios 17 it does show the transcription of my message sure there are some things that are wrong but you get the general gist depending on what you're doing even my longer seven minute audio messages are transcribed word for word so it's pretty great now yeah i would rather listen to it than read that but in case that's something it wasn't clear or you're not able to read those it is a really nice feature it's something i was really excited when google announced it on their phones and i was just really happy that apple announced that they were going to be doing it in this ios 17 betas and another cool thing that you can do with the voice messages is if you got to stop for whatever reason you don't have to like start a new message you can actually add to that message which is really neat and a really nice little feature that you know for those of us who need just to pause and then continue you can just send one voice message that might be a little bit longer than two or several little voice messages that just go on and on and on. Um, so yeah, a little bit easier. In the same vein, stickers that you can make customized in your messages app now and for your messages are really funny. I've done a couple for myself, for my wife and for my daughter, and they're really fun to use. I don't use them so often, but I did have to try them out and see how cool they are. And they're pretty neat. It's just like, I don't use stickers that often. I'm more of a GIF guy. What do you, GIF, emojis, or stickers? Let me know how you like to express yourself through text messages. And though dictation is not limited to just messages, I do consider it under the branch of messages, but the new updates to dictation is really great. As someone who used dictation a lot, I'm still used to like speaking very robotically to get it to understand me word for word, but I'm just now kind of getting used to the whole just talk normally and I'll understand your nuances, the commas, the periods, the question marks, the exclamation points, it'll all get that. And that's really cool. The one thing I'm not too thrilled about the new messages app is that the little stickers and places that used to just be on the top of your keyboard is now in this little section. Yeah, it looks a little bit cleaner, but you have to like, it's an extra button that you have to press and then it's like up and down where I'm used to going like side to side. So I don't know, it, it's cool, it's nice, it's cleaner, but it's also kind of, it does take a little bit to get used to, but it's not that bad. I can see a ton of people preferring that over what it used to be, but to each his own. The next one is FaceTime voicemail, which I'm really excited to use on people, but with, again, not being able to send that or try this with anybody else who has iOS 17, I haven't been able to try this, but this is one I am really excited to try because it just makes sense. Why does voicemail only have to be when you're making a phone call? So this makes a lot of sense and I think it's gonna be really great. And speaking of voicemail, the new live voice message system that you're able to do, basically just an answering machine and you can see it happen live through a transcription 
um, it's pretty cool. It's really nice to know. It's like, oh, you know, if you have a loved one calling you and leaving a voicemail and you're not able to answer the phone, you can see if that's something you need to rush to right away or if it can wait. So yeah. The next thing though is AirDrop. That has been really cool to try out. I haven't been able to like tap anybody, but it does have that little prompt every time I do an Air, Air, um, AirDrop. So, oh, you can just get it close to the other device. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I just haven't tried it myself, like I said. And the best part of the new AirDrop update is being able to send larger files and not having to sit there and waiting for the AirDrop to complete before you walk away. Imagine you go to, you take some photos or videos with your friends and you wanna AirDrop it to them or you don't wanna send it through a text message, whatever. AirDropping, once it's situating itself, you can just walk away and it'll continue and notify you when it's done. You don't even have to keep your phone on. You just turn it off and put it in your pocket and you'll get a notification once it's complete. And I really like that because I often will send larger files between phones and stuff like that or my computer and I can just walk away once it's started and I think that's really useful. Before I go on to the next couple features of iOS 17 that you need to try, make sure to like this video if you found it informative and helpful so far and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Here on Ardently Tech, we believe tech was made to make our lives easier, so we're here to help you discover and understand tech that improves your life. So if you've ever been confused by tech or just a fellow tech lover, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. The next one is contact photos. This is like one of my favorite ones to do because it makes so much sense. They take the customizing features that you're able to do with the home screen from iOS 16, being able to customize it in a similar manner is really helpful. It makes it really like kind of feel cohesive. So similar style, you pick a photo, you can have it, you know, your name come from behind you or be behind your photo, depending on where your photo is and things like that. It's just really nice. I just wish that you could have maybe a couple different or design a couple different and share particular ones depending on the circumstances so if you have one like that's for your friends and family or you have one that's for your professional setting or your side business like it'll be really cool to be able to choose which ones you share and how you want to be contacted but maybe in the future they'll be able to add that i don't think that's a hard ask but you know being able to just tap and share your contact just like that is really cool it's just a nice way to present yourself and be able to be in charge of how you show up in other people's phones. It just kind of feels like a digital business card in a way and you're able to like add as much information or what information you want to share with them, whether your address or your email or what email you use. Like I said, I just wish that there was like a couple of different ones that you could make and that would be really nice. Nonetheless, a really cool feature. But my favorite feature of iOS 17 that everyone has to try is that standby mode. You can use standby mode by charging your phone and then turning it sideways or horizontal mode. And it doesn't matter if you're using MagSafe or Lightning or USB-C for those of you who might have a new iPhone 15, but as long as it's charging in some capacity and sitting up sideways, you should be good. Sometimes it takes a little bit time to kind of show up, but I'm sure that'll get better over time. I just really like it because it gives a really nice way to turn your phone into somewhat of a nightstand. There's a couple built-in widgets that you can use right now, but I can see this expanding to other third-party widgets that, that can really elevate this and make it look really nice. Usually I have an o'clock. I use it on the dual side and it has like any calendar events I have for that day as well as the time. Like I wish I would be able to customize it so it's like calendar, date and weather, and then the time. That'd be really cool so I can really see more customization coming out from there. But being able to turn your phone into like a nightstand or alarm clock is really cool in the sense that it's just easier to see. And when it's at night, it turns all red so there's no blue light and it's just really easy on the eyes. I really hope that they bring this feature to iPads as they're charging because it would really kind of elevate the iPad experience to a new level if they're able to create a standby mode for this because when it's docked or charging, you don't often have any use for your iPad while you're not using it, but being able to have it like that would be really useful. Maybe the iPad Pros will have it, maybe it has to wait for OLED displays to be able to have this functionality, but in any case, I really hope it does does come to the iPad soon. A few honorable mentions of the new features that you need to try is the new Siri. Siri has gotten a lot better. You don't have to say, hey Siri anymore. You can just say Siri. Sorry if I made your phone go off with that. Searching in photos is also a really cool new little update that you can try. Um, the little eye, the little information button on the bottom of photos, if you have like a picture of food or a picture of an animal, it will like have information about that photo or food or animal. It's really cool and a bunch of other things too. You will just see that eye kind of change into a different icon 
which is like if it's an animal it's like a paw print i think if it's food it's something else so pretty cool nice little new feature but if you have any questions about ios 17 and, and other features before you update make sure to leave them in the comments below i'll help you the best that i can in my experience of using ios 17 and if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe for more videos like this and watch any of our videos right here otherwise we'll see you in the next one peace